welcome to Winterberg in Germany, Freues Neue Jahr. We are here for race four of the BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Cup, the first of the European round of race weekends. After three in North America, we now have seven in Europe to complete the season, including, of course, the World Championships in Samaritz coming up at the end of this month. But to the task in hand, Martin Haven and Mike Rogel's here to watch the men's skeleton. And Mike, Winterberg is a track where a lot of young sliders come to learn. That doesn't mean it's not difficult. And, and as always, with a relatively straightforward track, the devil is in the detail, right? Exactly. Easy to get down, hard to get down very fast. Um, so it's kind of a, a medium short start to me. Uh, they hit it hard off the start. Try to get to the left side of the track, unlike this guy, uh, before curve zero. And uh, try to get, it taps the wall a couple times, try to get kind of middle early parallel to to curve one and then in two you just try to minimize the waves try to minimize the distance traveled you're still traveling pretty slow at the point in the track and then three just a little bit of steering to try and set up a good entrance of four so you don't get too early to five um, this is the first time you get it like a speed boost out of the track you get some nice acceleration out of the second pressure six we'll try to make you tack the right wall before chrysal chrysal again you're just trying to minimize waves you're still kind of going pretty slow at here um, again, eight will try to pick you up three into the right wall before nine. Nine is a big speed boost. You're dropping quite a bit of distance. You just saw 10 has passed by. You don't even touch it on skeleton. Uh, 11, 12, 13, it's, uh, it, you're going fast at this point. And then all of a sudden you're going uphill. Hit the brakes. I don't even know how much vertical it is, but it's a lot. Right here on the exit, you saw that the, the, uh, the sled almost flipped. You might see some action there today. Yeah. Uh, not infrequent to see a sled roll out of the final corner. So our start list then, we have 20 athletes in the field, uh, including a couple that we did not see in North America. We welcome back the Chinese sliders to the fold. Uh, they've been practicing their trade, not in China, but in uh, the uh, Europa Cup, as a couple of the others have. Uh, so we will see some new names and new faces and uh, a couple will be joining us later in the season as well. Uh, our regular front runners are here, and uh, including the Olympic champion here, he is on the right-hand side, Christopher Grote here. Uh, the other thing you'll see is that next week here is the Junior World Championships, so there are some new names coming in just for practice for the Junior Worlds. Mike Rogels uh, will be here next week as well, uh, coaching uh, some of the new young Dutch sliders that we haven't seen. There's Blake Enzi of Canada. You saw Evan Neufeld with half a birthday message, half on Blake's sled, half on Evan's sled. Uh, Blake goes off second, Evan goes off 20th, so that's quite a wait for the second half of the message. Amadeo Banyas, the Italians have been in Europe as well uh, since the start of the season, but they join us here, so Amadeo will be first off. And then Jung Seung Gui from Korea, our World Cup points leader for the first time ever in his life. He is the points leader. And uh, Jung will go off in uh, the middle of the top 10 athletes. So we are ready for the first European slider of the season. Amadeo Banias, the 23-year-old Italian. Big starter. Big starter, best result here, 11th place. 492, the start record, 475 points. Zero handled very well there. A little too much crossed into two, so he might get some kind of big waves, but that's being pretty picky on my part. And the track's been pretty slow all week uh, because the weather has been crazy warm and wet. Yeah, so it, it's rained all day, every day, pretty much, and, and that means that the track frosts very quickly, but hopefully today it should stay relatively dry. Yeah, hopefully. Um, it, it's just the, the track's acting a little bit weird because everybody's going just a little bit slow, so there's extra little pieces of pressures at the end of the curves. <laughs> looks nice. A little too early to 13. A little bit of a drop off to 14. Speed's pretty okay though for the conditions. 127. And then, oh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit rough on the exit there. So when you're going up 14, you just try not to, you try to not flip, but you don't want to do too much because you're going uphill. And anytime you're driving, that slows the sled down. It slows down double when you're going uphill. So you, it's, you're really trying to ride a fine line between like just tagging the wall at the exit and flipping. Now, a good start is not a hindrance here in Winterberg, is it? Not at all. Not at all. It's kind of a shorter track, and um, 
because it's easy to get down, even if you're making mistakes and not building all the speed, if you have a few extra, you know, fractions of a, a kilometer or a mile per hour at the start, you can make some mistakes and throw it away and it's fine. Riding high on the wall. You see the little red line there in the track. That's where the finish line actually is. Uh, so that is the finish line. He's sort of not really in contact with the ground as he came across yeah, there. As long as the helmet crosses the beam first, yeah, it's all that's good. fine. Uh, didn't look overjoyed with that. Next no. up, Blake Enzi, former speed skater, the 21 year old Canadian in only his seventh World Cup start. Raced here previously in the Junior Worlds in 2020 and in Intercontinental Cup, so he's got a little knowledge of the track. Yeah, he's going to be racing here in Junior Worlds next week, from what I understand as well. So, zero. Looks good. A little adjustments. That's a skid. Um, so that's going to hurt him quite a bit. A little bit of a late entrance to two. But he's handling it very nicely. Everything looks smooth. And here, the camera doesn't lie, you do go uphill into turn four, don't you? You do, well? you so do. You go uphill and then downhill again, yeah. so you do have a moment where the sled uh, loses weight. Like, you, you basically, it's like in a roller coaster when you go over the crest. Yeah. Uh, you lose weight, it's very easy to skip there. First Chrysler of the season, because oh, none of the tracks we're in in North America have one, so that's another kind of readjustment. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Tags the road. And he actually gets off the So, yeah, he's... Uh, a little bit off, a little bit off everywhere, yeah. but not too far off. And, and like speed's still pretty good. Seem to be just kind of skidding quite a lot. They, yeah, yeah, he looked like. So what can happen sometimes if if there's actually water on the track, or so if they spritz the track before the the run, uh, you end up hydroplaning like you would in a car, and you just lose control. The sled has a lot less grip than you would normally expect. Yeah, I was talking setup. to a, a couple of the guys yesterday. That <laughs> Andrew Blasi was saying one one runner is in the wet, so he's skidding along. The other one hits the frost and just stops dead. So it's, oh, you just you just take a ninety degree turn into the wall. Yeah. It, it's uh, very frustrating. Yeah, you just saw uh, hard up on bumping up onto the curve there. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he's just a little bit off in a few places. Uh, he, he hit the right wall before nine, which I think was what yeah. we're seeing right now. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that's what caused him to get up on onto 10 at the exit. A long way from the wheat fields of Alberta represented on his helmet. Next up is Yan Wengang of China, our Olympic bronze medalist in men's skeleton in Beijing. Turns 21. Well, in terms of the number of races, he started 21st World Cup race. He was ninth and 12th in the two races last year. We came here twice last season. Run, run, once run, in run, December, run, 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 once run, run, in January. Dirk Matchins, run, run, run. Okay. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, 495, only 300s off. Oh, too early. It looks like there's a nice cup on the right wall out of zero, so it's kind of keeping sliders from hitting the wall too hard. And the reason there's a corner before turn one is because they rebuilt the whole start area and there's a little bend in the track. And so we already had turn one. And so that's... It's too hard to learn new numbers. Just make it zero. If yeah. they change it again, make it Minus negative one. one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so far pretty clean. I, I like this prize. Huh? We'll see how... The, oh, a little bit of rise at the end. That's okay as long as he doesn't... A little bit early here. Um, so the, the profile of the curve looks like it's... Uh, Gets to the right now. Uh, 11 is kind of a, a gut check moment. No, he's going pretty fast. He is going pretty fast. 128.6, that is 79.9 miles an hour, and a three tenths of a second lead for Yang Wen Gang. It's a good run for him. Good run. Um, yeah. yeah, like I said, I was probably, probably going to be a little bit picky on lines here. Um, most things can work. You just need to kind of flow with it, not tense up and not mess up. You can hear the slushy noise of the ice here compared to the crackle that we were getting in North America because the ice yeah. was so much colder. Yeah, no, in, in North America, you could you could hear the little the chips of ice yeah. skittering down the track after the athletes started. So this is kind of like a gut check moment where you get high, you feel that you're high, you want to panic and look, but if you look, that's a moment when the sled accelerates, so it's yeah. going to try and rip you off the sled. He trusted the process there, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, just, just it trust. High and, yeah. Keep your shoulders, keep your shoulders on the sled. Yeah. So, three sleds down in our field of 20. Yang Wengang of China, the Olympic bronze medalist, is the leader. Jeff Payne holds the sled for our fourth starter, Austria's Florian Auer. 44th World Cup start for Flo. 
Raced here in December last year to 24th place. It was not a good race for him. Didn't come back for the January race. In fact, a number of athletes didn't. They were kind of in pre-Olympics by that stage. Seven previous World Cup starts here, his best seventh place in December 2018. So the potential is there. Yeah, no, this is this track is similar in a lot of ways to his home track of Eagles. Uh, that's a pretty big skid for uh, two skids uh, from zero to one. Um, good entrance of two, though. Um, so in terms of the way you slide the track, it's similar. The curves are all obviously different. Um, but he's he, he's a glider. He knows how to glide and build speed in the, the spots of the track where everybody says you can't, uh, yep. you can't do anything. A half a second back in third spot off the fourth fastest start, second best speed into the Kreisel. Yeah, he's hitting all the entrances as far as I can see. Like, uh, he's hitting the lines that I would like to hit in terms of the entrances. No, it's fine. Everything's perfect. Yeah. He's, he's doing a really good job. <laughs> 129 zero, yeah, 80.2 miles an hour. That's perfect, that's textbook way to exit uh, 14, so. But gave away too much time early on, so yeah, the speed building late. The the start and then the, the skids from yeah. uh, zero to one really killed him. Yeah, went from 1800s behind at the first 50 meters to half a second back by corner five, and that's, yeah, those early corners, Yeah. so critical. Yeah, no, I thought he was going to get a little high, but I think he did a good... I mean, that is that is a little high. Yeah. But he did a good job either countering or doing something on the exit to uh, keep himself from hitting the wall before 13. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, a, little, just a little bit. A little late bit. flop. A little, little flop, a little abrupt. But. Everything here is a balance between control and lack of control, which gives you speed or, or lack of contact. Absolutely. So, Actually, it looked like Jan either drove better or had more control. So it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. That is 100% accurate. It's, um, yeah, for me, I would always run a, a super out of control setup here and just yeah. try to make it stick. <laughs> and wrestle um, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, the that doesn't work. it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of the times your fastest sliders are going to look slightly out of control. Things are going to look like they're slightly off. So here's our World Cup leader, Jung Seung Gui of Korea. 23-year-old, three medals so far this season out of his career four. So he's had a really good start to the year, and 493 is a good, good getaway. Start. And best velocity it's as a well. Big wave in two, but we'll see how what happens there in terms of his speed down the track. Um, yeah, everything's going pretty okay. Maybe a little earlier than I like the five, but it's work. It works for him. Sunbin Young, his compatriot, has won twice on this track in 2019 and 2018. And Jung, close to the lead, but just a hundredth back. Yeah. Oh, this is a pretty good game. We haven't had a Chinese winner in Winterberg ever, and we're away from that yet, but... Pull away. Yeah. No Germans down, but it's an Asian 1-2. Jung leads by six hundredths of a second from Yan Wen Gang. So two silver medals, his best World Cup results. And three previous World Cups on this track. Yeah, they, they, train, uh, they changed equipment uh, manufacturers for this season. So it seems to be working out pretty okay. Uh, so what are they sliding on now? They're on Schneiders now. Okay. They were on uh, Bromley's for Bromley's, years yeah. and years. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a big. That is a big sea a huge, change. Huge change. It, it's it's Completely like a different way to drive a sled. Yeah. It's like going from from sneakers to boots. I mean, they they yeah. they are completely so, different. Yeah. I mean, they they both kind of do the same thing, but they feel completely different. And it's interesting because that sort of change is happening with the British skeleton athletes as well. And their current sleds handle totally differently from their old sleds. And so the instinct that you rely on to be really quick is not quite there. Yeah, but so, in some cases it can be a good thing too. Because yeah. if you have to relearn everything from scratch, you have no bad habits. It's a good chance to reset everything. Next up, USA's Austin Florian, the 28-year-old in his 31st World Cup race. I like that zero. Oh, a little bit of trouble afterwards, though. Made his World Cup debut, in fact, on this track back in December 2018. Yeah, he's got. Oh, that's a little bit rough. He's got kind of a love hate 
uh, thing going on with this track. He has one run, he's like, this is amazing, this track's so great. And then you see him the next round, he's like, I hate this place. So it's like golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We had a great start, still within 12 hundredths of the lead. He's, yeah, he didn't speak, and yeah. it's a big wave. So, yeah, he's a little too early there for my taste. Yeah, he's just kind of making mistakes everywhere. So nothing dramatic, oh, ooh, yeah. having said that. Yeah, nothing particularly. But look at the difference that made. That's not two tenths out of his pace as yeah, well. Yeah, I think that really that, that early entrance to Kreisel will really hurt him. I like, I mean, his 14 looked looked great. Like, that's exactly where you want to attack the ball. But, um, yeah, just like out of zero, just the, the skid right before the entrance of one. And then he was a little too high late at the exit of two. Maybe even touched the wall right at the exit of two. Um, Again, they need an off-ramp here at turn four, don't they? Wait, okay, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, you see there was, a, I mean, relative to other sliders, there's a big spike and then a big second spike in Kreisel. And you kind of want to be, you want a little bit of waves, but you want to be mostly flat there. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit free, but he does a good job of keeping keeping his shoulders down and trying to let the sled be as fast as possible. Yeah. So he's not happy with that run, but uh, you know. have to try and find yeah. something yeah. in the second heat. A lot of noise at the top of the track. There's lots of orange shirts now. This is colloquially known as the Dutch Alps. Lots and lots of Dutch skiers here this uh, winter break, but the orange is not for them. It is for this man. This is Axel Jungs, traveling circus fan club. 31-year-old Olympic silver medalist in Beijing. And Axel starting his 60th World Cup skeleton race here. Double the uh, World Cup experience of the uh, yeah. last guy. And lots of noise at the start to encourage him. 4.95, that's a good getaway. That's good. He, looked, he almost had a skid, but then he fixed it. Like, expertly. Two silver medals in his last two outings. He's had five silver, four silver medals and a bronze medal on this track, yet to win. I mean, he's, yeah, he's pretty good here. Uh, this looks, to me, very nice so far. Very nice. 600 to to seven. Yeah, and best speed into the Chrysler as well. And so wavy, he used a toe to fix it, though. Yeah. That was a, a like a, a very good correction in the last, in the moment. Best speed again, 1100s up, growing the lead. Yeah. Nice and tidy. Well, this is what you expect to see when you return to Germany. Oh, but, uh, yeah. And unfortunately, then. Deletes your speed. Coming uphill all the way, there you go. Yeah. Went from 1100s up to 600s back. Basically, he, it looked like to me like he over controlled 11 a little bit too much, so he didn't get quite enough cross into 12. And he had a, a, a late spike of height, which pushed him too early to 13, which he hung on to the end of 13, it flopped off, which caused a skid. So it's really. Things compound pretty quickly when you get to that high-speed portion of the track. So tied for silver with Yang, Yang, Yang Wen Gang at the moment. Three sleds covered by 600s. And that yeah, late the flop there, he was scrambling, wasn't he? Yeah, that's big-time hockey stop. Yeah. Oh. That, that's really unfortunate. And, you know, we're talking here of the difference of a tenth or two tenths of a second in where you steer or how long you hold it on the corner it makes that yes. dramatic looking difference. Yeah, that's. It's, it's too easy to throw it all the way here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the joy of this place. Speaking to one of the German sliders a few years ago, and she said uh, that Winterberg is frustrating because you, you can't feel your mistakes. Like, normally going on that track, you make a mistake, you're like, okay, that was slow. And yeah. Here, you could literally think you have a great run, and then you look at the time sheet. What just happened? Lots of noise at the start for him. 63rd World Cup race. 505. Brennan, not the fastest starter, but like his German teammate, Tina Hermann, can build speed down the track. It's German tradition at this point. Yeah, very much. 1700s back, so let's see where he gets to. Don't forget, Axel Jung, tied for second at the moment, was the leader at this stage. This is just very smooth. Bringing the gap back down. And that is a good prize. I like that. Yeah. It's very pretty. No variation. Sometimes holding yeah, it up actually not. takes time out of you, but it hasn't here for Christopher Grover here. Yeah, no, it's, um, this is just smooth. Yeah. 
Yep. Expect to see Tina Herman doing something similar this afternoon. Nice Not much back. speed I expected, though. Yeah, little mistakes maybe. And across the line, 600s back. That's a three-way tie for second place. Nice. Now, Christopher Grothair, of course, was one of the three in the three-way tie for gold in Innsbruck last year with uh, Matt Weston and Gong Wen Chang of China. Man, he just uh, needs that extra hundred somewhere. Yeah, well, that's what the second heat is for. <laughs> yeah. Because the first heat, you find out what the track's like today, don't you? Because they weren't here yesterday, they didn't slide for two yeah, days so on the ice, and it's totally different. Yeah, the bobsleds coming down yesterday during their training will have uh, slightly changed the shape of the ice, and then the weather's a little bit different, and yeah, everything changes just a little bit. And you've guessed a setup based on what you think the ice is going to be like, so you might sort of subtly adjust that as well. Well, we've had two Germans down. They're tied in second place. Here is our third German. Uh, this is just a random <laughs> random selection uh, out of a hat, and yet they all come as a clump. So Felix Kaiser, 24 years old, the youngest of the three. His 22nd World Cup start. Did compete at World Cup level last season. And one of the fastest starters in the business. I really like watching him at the start. Line. Yeah. Like high energy. Like pacing back and forth like a Cajun lion. Yeah. Like. 489, fastest getaway. Still 1300s, 1400s off the track record though. Parallel entrance of two. Nice and smooth. A little early, maybe to four, but it's it's fine. 400s faster at the start. He's going to be level here. He's dropping into the red. Yeah, it doesn't have quite up the speed. I don't know if he went too high control or if he's driving it too hard to get these nice lines I keep talking about. Yeah, the lines look good, the form looks good, and if the speed's not there, usually you look at the contact patch. Yeah, it's either set up or, or he's, you know, a little too stiff on the slide, a little too aggressive with the steers. Yeah. Uh, but with that said, I mean, he's still really fast. Habitually overdrives in the first run. And across the line, top six, fifth place, 57.05. So uh, two silver medals, his uh, career highlights. And again, didn't race in the World Cup here last season. His best on this track, a 14th place finish in January 2021 in the World Cup. Oh, that's uh, surprising to me. That was his start. Is, uh, I think that was where he popped the groove in the first heat. Okay. Just made it into the second, if I recall rightly, which I rarely okay. do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, yeah. I was having that conversation with uh, with Austin Florian because uh, in December last year he was 30th, and I went, "Did you pop the yeah? Yeah, I popped the groove." Yeah, that'll, that'll do it, usually. So Jung Sung Gui, our points leader, leads after the first nine sleds. Our tenth starter is Great Britain's Marcus Wyatt. So Wyatt with. A win earlier this season. Let's see what he can do. His record last year on this track, 25th in the first heat. Again, popped the groove and didn't race here in January. Another big starter, great driver. Like, he's basically the total sliding package normally. So and oh, and that's, a, a new, that's a big one. A new Guggenberger built sled. So again, continuing to learn the new equipment. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be some growing pains with that. Um, yeah. Um, that big, that, that skid from zero to one seems to have, re yeah, took, took the wind out of his sails. Yeah. Um, but maybe he can bring something back. But at the moment, he's not hemorrhaging too much time. No. Maybe 400s in it, but I like that engine of seven speeds way down. Yeah. So he needs to really get a, a good run down through Just the lap. A good 910 can do a lot for yeah. you. Yeah. Still only seventh best speed. He's, he's not really hemorrhaging too much time like you mentioned before. Yeah, when you've got three athletes tied together, yeah. suddenly you, you there goes don't that look great. Yeah. It's going to be a top six run. Where is he? Around Felix Keisinger. Yeah, yeah behind Keisinger by 900s and 500s ahead of Amadea Banyas. There's the coach and sled builder, Matthias Guggenberger. Given that skid between zero and one, uh, I'm really impressed. He did a good job just 
making the most out of his run. He's really liking the new equipment. And uh, talk to him about it, talk to Laura Dees about it in North America. It, it's a different feel, but it seems more responsive. And uh, I think they're just dialing themselves into that now. Yeah, no, it's it's good to see. And he did he did fix that skid basically as quickly as you can uh, without dropping a toe and just by using his body. So it's not like he did a bad job fixing it. It's just the zero. The steer and zero was a little bit off. He finds himself in sixth place after the first of our ten sleds. We have a group of four at the top covered by six hundreds of a second. So ten down, ten to go. First heat, race four of the BMW IBS F Men's Skeleton World Cup. We're in Winterberg in Germany. Martin Haven and former US slider and coach Mike Rogel's watching the action. Next up, Kim Jim Jisoo of Korea. 29th World Cup start for him. Oh, man, that was a really aggressive settle. This sled, he almost popped it out just by putting himself in grabbing his handles, basically. really throwing his head around on the exits. 482, enormously quick start, giving him more than a tenth over anybody. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's moving around a lot on the sled, but that doesn't necessarily mean that bad things are happening. It could just be how he makes small adjustments. The first time he came here in January 2020, he finished in sixth place, and he's never been as good since. No, look, yeah, that crowd was a little bit flat. Um, and by that, I mean he just he steered a little too much. Took too much speed out of it to try and make a flat line. It's taking him a long time to lose the lead. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's sliding well. He's just uh, kind of slowly bleeding the whole way down. 2600s back. It kind of went really south in, in quite a hurry below the labyrinth. Yeah, basically when you get, um, if you don't really get a lot of speed out of the lane, um, when you hit the uphill section in 14, just it's all gone. Yeah. The two top fives in the World Cup are his best results, yet to claim a medal finish. And sixth place, his best run here. Well, not the cleanest start. Yeah, I mean, little slip from the spikes, which actually is sort of odd in the, in a in a relatively a grippy, soft start. Yeah. I don't know. So it could have been quicker yet. 482, only 700s off Alexander Trechikov's all-time record. Set back in 2014. So yeah. Eight years old start record. That was a fast year for for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Most years were fast years. For I mean, that's fair. He's, be... he's had a few wins on this track. Yeah. Lots of noise now for Vladislav Hereskevich of Ukraine, the 23-year-old, six previous World Cup starts on this track. He was 19th and 25th here in the two races last season. And that's kind of Vlad in a nutshell, really. Sometimes he's good and sometimes he has a, a nightmare. So, sometimes like amazingly fast and other times surprisingly. Yeah. A little kind of a late crossing, late end. Er, one, two, reasonably yeah, I mean, it's, you can see, like, his arm coming out, and he, he kinda, he's trying to force the sled places a little too much. I don't know when he drove over the five. This is two, which is a valid first yeah, the best speed. He is our 12th slider. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he's just over-controlling it to me. Like, it, he doesn't look comfortable and relaxed. He's just kind of like, where's the next car? I'm going to drive this thing. I'm going to make it fast. I wonder if he's at the stage where he needs something that's different, because he's on a Schneider, isn't he? Yes, he is. And, you know, famously, they need a lot of work to make them do things. I wonder if he borrowed yeah, just a swap Bromley and j just to feel what the difference For like can three, be like. four weeks, and yeah. then he'd go back. Yeah. Um, or pre-season or post-season, yeah, just to... To try something different, you know, often that yeah, can, I mean, can uh, make a Schneider's a very sensitive sled um, in straightaways. It's, it's very, not in straightaways, and most of the time that's actually a very reactive sled. Yeah. It just tends to flatten the lines. So you can do little steers and they have a big effect. You see here he, oh, yeah, he steered towards the entrance of five on the exit of four. Yeah. And he was a little too early. Yeah. It's just... Uh, just doesn't look comfortable. One thing he does have in spades is bravery. He'll be oh, right yeah. up by the woodwork and not flinch. So no, no one will ever accuse him of being a coward. 
So Matthias Kungerberger with one of the new sleds next up for Matt Weston of Great Britain. Three, uh, two times a race winner at the World Cup in his previous 17 starts. And he raced here three times in Europa Cup in the Junior Worlds in 2020 and in December 21. 492, that's another good getaway. Yeah, no, zero to one managed very nicely. Uh, one to two, yeah, a little more cross than I like, but that, maybe that works on his sled. I've obviously never been on a googie sled, so. A little too much height, a little too early to five for my taste, but we'll see. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, skid. So he was trying to shy away from the entrance of seven because he wanted to be a little bit later. It looked like he was going to hit the wall and then it caused a skid when he a little bit of body English is enough. Still top five speed. Yeah, good speed. Don't forget the top four are covered by six hundreds of a second. Yeah, I mean, if you're anywhere in there. Yeah. I mean, he's a good speed, though. Yeah, he's ahead of Keisinger at the moment, but only 10th yeah. best speed at the bottom. So he's bled it away somewhere and seventh yeah, at the line. Of yeah. Just that little skid right before the entrance. You, you can throw away quite a lot there. His best result on this track in his only previous World Cup race, 11th place. I mean, to be fair, he's still in seventh, so it's not yeah. like he's doing bad. He's just uh, not quite where I would expect him. Yeah, 400s out of six, 700s out of fifth, but uh, basically three tenths away from medals. Hi, my fiance. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, got engaged over the Christmas New Year break. That, that uh, always entertaining times. Hi, my yep, there it is. Yeah, there's so the what happens in six is that the curve naturally kind of wants to to hold you up and keep you on too long, and especially on a stiff sled, which I assume the Google, the Google Burger is based on the way the sleds move. Um, what'll often happen is it the, the nose of the sled will not turn quite enough, so it's still pointed up, and then you run out of curve and yeah. you kind of skid off with the nose nose pointed left. Next up, USA's Andrew Blaza. Only race here in January 2020 and January 21, two 22nd place finishes. Well, he will, if he finishes the two heats, he will improve on that because we only have 20 sleds in the field. Let's see what Blaza can do here. Was a little bit perplexed after training because every run seemed to be on a different track because of the weather. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's got... Ooh, big skid. Big skid continuing to happen. Um, it's kind of love hate again with for Bl Blazer here. He's uh, oh, that's a pretty big wave in two. And, uh, yeah, um, I don't think this is gonna go so great for him. Unfortunately, he looks relaxed on the sled though. It's, he's not fighting too hard for things. Arms okay. That's a skid. Uh, five to six. So five again. If you have a too much lead height in, in five, which is easier to happen on a Schneider. You come, the nose is pointed up, and you have this kind of long, gentle skid in 2.6. It's hard to feel as a slider uh, when it's happening. At least for me, I, was, I had a hard time feeling it. But uh, you definitely see it on the thing. See his head's up quite a lot, just looking for the line. And again, relative lack of familiarity. He's only raced twice on the track to 58.24. There's a, a great YouTube video of him uh, having pretty rough runs here, his first time here. A <laughs> uh, clip that was put together, I think, by Austin Florian. Uh, so Yeah, that's what friends are for, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you can uh, yeah. try to find that or post, you can post somewhere where that, what that video is called. Uh, it's, it's worth a watch. Well, the height was good, but the exit, yeah, yeah a little oh, rough. really trying to force it over. Yeah. Yeah, uh, into 12. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching back home. I know it's early. We'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Any race day start that starts with a zero is always early. I mean, if you know you're having that bad of a run, I don't I don't know why you don't try to go for the victory roll just for the crowd. <laughs> well, actually, he's got the second heat to think about. Uh, I guess that's fair. Next up, Alexander Schlittner. Only the eighth World Cup start for this young man, 24 years old from Austria. Only one previous World Cup here and a couple of Europa Cups. Uh, also raced in the Junior Worlds in 2020. And in fact, 24, he could race here in the Junior Worlds next week. Not sure if he is or not. Yeah, I don't know either. But uh, he may well be staying here rather than spending two weeks in Altenburg. 5-10 getaway. I like that zero. That's a little slightly different line than I've ever taken, but it worked pretty well for him. 
I thought in North That's America we, we saw him, you know, kind of uh, all three weeks. Not the greatest starter, but he does look like he can drive the slow pretty well. He does. I mean, he has some, some moments of... Uh, uh, I don't know. And that's a nice way to put where he messes up. <laughs> um, he has these, these lapses of concentration or whatever it is. Um, or just an experience. Well, and, and that's part of it, isn't it? You know, he's relatively young. He's new to the World Cup. And it's, a, yeah. it's an experienced sport. It is. You could probably peak around the time of the if you can stay healthy that long. Yeah. And then keep going till your early 40s if your name's Martins de Cruz. Koshi. Yeah, kind of wild. Or All the way down. Rally. There it is. Might see it. Oh, almost. Mm. Yeah, he just let it run. At that point, he felt the run going away and did yeah. everything he could to drive me fast up 14, which is nothing. Oh. So. Yeah. That was full. Yeah, forget about it. Just, yeah. Just yeah, go. I mean, he hit the right wall before the entrance of 14, if my memory serves me correctly, which would point him kind of late into the curve. And then he has a big spike and he drops super low. And then you're going to have a big spike and you're going to drop super low and be pointed right at like a third degree angle into that right wall. So he's really annoyed yeah, with his himself. Touched the, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. tag the wall there. Well, and yeah, again, there, the, the fact that he's hanging on to the handles yeah. is the only reason he actually stayed on the sled. Now he's super annoyed with himself, and you know that, that again too is part of the sport. You've, you've, you know, the potential's there. Yeah, no, he does great things. Now he's digging it out. Okay, 15 down, five to go, and next up, returning to the World Cup, 23rd start for Craig Thompson, first World Cup of the season. He's had four Intercontinental Cup podiums, including two here in December. So he's been racing in Europe as he rehabbed an injury. Oh, okay. I, I honestly didn't know why he was on ICC first yeah, half. Yeah, he, was, uh, he wasn't quite fit enough to make the World Cup, but uh, he is now 4.89. There you go. So he is still oh, getting there. Still quick. He was always a super fast starter. Yep. At first, he was kind of uh, not that great going down the track, but he's really learned how to go in the past few years. Yeah. And again, the, uh, as they roll out the new Googie sleds, he, I think, may well be the next one to get one. Yeah, this is looking smooth so far. Yeah. He's bleeding time, I'm not sure why. And, and this has been the story of the Black Box sled over the last few seasons. Good start, lines are good, don't hit anything, just keeps bleeding speed. And that's yeah, why the... Water speed. Yeah, that's why the big step change has come to go to a completely different sled setup. Yeah, I don't know... Um... Oh, that was late. Oh, that's too early. Yeah. And again, you know, just trying to let it go as free as possible can mm -hmm. can have its own downsides as well. 57-31. Yes. So, yeah, no, I mean, you try to let it go, to let it fly as much as possible, but there's a certain point where you have to steer, and he actually did a very good job of that. He had a non-ideal, like a... Un not a great entrance to 12, which set up a little too early to 13, but he fixed it in 13. Fifth here in January 21, his best result in Winterberg. Yeah, just, I don't know if he steered too hard at the exit here. You see that he doesn't get, yeah, oh, that's a skid off the exit. That's what happened. Yeah. Caused him to go, so he's middle skidding, and then it, he ended up, when the sled hooks up, when it hits the pressure, your runner's grip again all of a sudden and just shoots you off in a straight line wherever your nose is pointed at that moment. Yin Cheng of China, 26 years old, his fifth World Cup race start. He was our push world champion in men's skeleton in Lake Placid. Raced here previously only in Europa Cup in November 21, took a pair of gold medals. So his memories of the track will be relatively recent and pretty happy, I would think. Yeah, and he's got an amazing helmet too. So yeah, he does. 4.86, oh. good getaway. Oh, second so skid. Overcorrected for the first skid. So we'll see how much that hurts him. And again, we talk about experience. It's not just experience of you and your sled. It's experience of each of the tracks as well, which, which leads away from those errors. Yes. Or should do. It's pretty late. It's a five, but I like it. Um, oh, it looks like he had a little bit of a skid there. I just haven't even seen two big waves. Yeah. Except he, he steers pretty hard to bring it back under control. And working hard on the exit as well. When you see the legs moving around, you know that he's working hard on the sled. Yeah, that's, and it's reflected in his speed. Yeah. Well, this is a, it's a classic Winterberg run, isn't it? Kind of a carrot's egg. If, if you lose yeah. time at the start, 
Yeah, it's going to haunt you all the way down. Yep. Yeah, you lose a little bit of speed, and then all of a sudden uh, the curves also are a little bit different. Like the lower curves behave differently. And if you didn't make that mistake in training, or if you were faster in training, then all of a sudden you don't know how to drive the curve. Well, his first World Cup start here. He is in 13th place with, uh, what, three more sleds to go. So could be looking at a top 10 if he can tidy things up in the second heat. Of course, everybody will be trying to do that. But yeah, that's... Pretty decent getaway, 486. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a quick starter. Again, obviously. yeah, the, the world <laughs> doesn't hurt you here. Well, you know, a push track is one thing, a, a slightly rainy start area is another, but uh, yeah, he's he's got speedy legs, that's for sure. So next up is Chen Wenhao of China, slightly more experienced in terms of World Cup starts is Chen. This is his eighth World Cup start compared to the fifth of Yen. Oh, I thought you were going sarcastic there. No, no, no. You were actually... He actually, yeah, he's done three more. Okay. As they sort of dribbled them in in I mean, the way into the Olympics. But yeah. Yeah. One World Cup here, December 21, and he was in 18th place in what was a bumper field then of 30 sleds. Yeah, we've had a little... Ooh, oh, he was still settling when he got out of the groove. We kind of hopped himself to yeah. settle and, and just, yeah. But his zero looked great. Uh, and I mean, maybe that was a good... Although he went sideways, he didn't actually seem to skid. He just no, and, jumped, bunny hopped sideways. And, uh, most sliders do try to pull themselves yeah. to the left side uh, to get a, a shallower angle of attack into zero. I'm not sure it's a new technique, but it did no. hurt him. Yeah, I mean, I think it did hurt him a little bit, but not as bad as it could have been. It's in the way that he's quite often got his ankles well apart. A very kind of KTU lender style where he's got parallel legs rather than bringing the ankles together. Yeah, I mean, so uh, so aerodynamics in the sport are insanely individual. Mm. So it could be that he's been in the wind tunnel and he knows that for him, he plays the water. Or it could just be that that's how he's, when he relaxes his body. Yeah. That's what happens. I, I don't don't know. I don't know where he's been. Uh, I, but I do know that it's it's crazy how individual aerodynamics are in this sport. Yes. <laughs> um, literally like a tenth of a second. Something that speeds someone else up by a tenth of a second may make you a tenth of a second slower in terms of your, your posture. Or... Okay, 13th across the line, 200s ahead of Yin Cheng, who just preceded him. So we talk always about the, the little races within a race. There's one right there. Yeah, so you see him settling super aggressively. I think maybe he just took it too many steps. Yeah, it was definitely a skid. Yeah. Did he miss the wall? Did he miss? Yeah. Toe comes out just about. Misses yeah, him. so that, that did throw away a lot of his speed, unfortunately. Um, the other thing with having the, the, the le leg, legs apart is it puts a little bit more pressure on the on the rear of the runners sometimes, and so that can help with stabilizing yeah, the sled. Yeah, it also puts, uh, makes it so, that, so we have little paddles inside the sled yeah. that you use to put pressure on the uh, the corners. But if you put your knees directly on the corners, you get more of a, uh, a direct input of driving. Um, you'll actually see Mattia tends to slide with his feet further apart, kind of almost knees almost on the corner of the sled. Billy Schneider helping coach the Italians. Mattia Gaspari, first World Cup of the season. 29 years old from Cortina D'Ampezzo. He's a, an amazing driver. <clears throat> yeah, like, and was a good and starter, then had a, a, a major Achilles injury running into the Pyeongchang Games, which actually set him back for two or three years. Yeah, yeah, but n now he's... Usually one of the best drivers in the field. He was a little too early to seven there, so he's got these big waves. Uh, we'll see how that impacts him. Well, I like his, he has speed's yeah. gone. 15th uh, best start. He, he never really had speed from the beginning. I don't yeah. know what was, he just wasn't able to build it like he normally does. That and the track is probably frosting a bit. It may well be in the last few sleds. I've actually been pretty surprised how consistent it has been up to this point but you can kind of see the wet patches are getting smaller. Well, the, the other issue is that he was 2300s uh, slower away from the start than the two yeah, Chinese so athletes we just see. multiply that by three. Yeah. So three quarters of a second. Yeah, okay. <sighs> yeah, I mean, uh, like, there are a few spots where it looked like he was what I would say offline, and then he was fixing things in straightaways, which you never want to do. Um, but 
it seemed like something I didn't want to point out to because it seemed so minor. I don't know if, uh, yeah, uh, he just had no speed. There's the other half of that happy birthday message. There's the other half of the happy birthday message, yeah, to Blake Enzi's sister Claire, 23 years old. So happy it birthday a character to her. Yeah, Evan is definitely a character. Now, he uh, did the first two races in North America, did not go to Lake Placid. Raced here in Europa Cup, in Intercontinental Cup, in the 2015 Worlds, and was here in January this year as well. So four races on this track in eight years. Not a lot of experience, you'd think. No, not a lot here, but he did slide for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's usually a pretty good glider. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, okay, that's not so ideal. Not so ideal. He's actually the only person I've ever seen that has had a backflip. He used to have a standing backflip, and he still does. He does still it? does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That sounds very much like him. He'll break it out in the finish area. In fact, if you uh, check out his online profile, he's got a little gif of him doing one in the in the headroom shot, headshot room. Perfect. So yeah. Now he's uh. A 14th best start, but that uh, speed, speed went away right. early, didn't it? Yeah. The, that entrance of uh, of one he hit the it looked like he his sled got into the expansion joint between zero and one yeah. right at the entrance of one kicked him very late so at the moment this is going to be 20th place in yeah, our sled of 20 uh, field of 20 sleds cut away from him he said he's been yeah. struggling a little bit, so. yeah. There's Joe Cicchini, the coach. Both of them originally from Calgary, or slid in Calgary. Pretty sweet flexes, though. Yeah. Newfelt from Saskatchewan. Yeah, I mean, I've also seen him uh, surface sled up the outrun. At least I get to go first heat too, right? Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Get the day uh, done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, a, he's a character. He's a good guy to have around. Yeah. I always think, actually, there's, there's quite a similarity in... in kind of mentality and approach between him and Mimi Reneva, who's also quite a, a you yeah, know, kind of phlegmatic and a, a little bit spiritual in the approach. And I think Evan is very similar. Oh, here we go. There we go. <laughs> yes, there you go. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, the good number of injuries on. you would get trying to emulate that. Yeah, good thing he landed on the spikes. Because <laughs> uh, if he landed on his heels, that is a very slippery piece of plastic. Jung Seung Gui from Korea is our points leader. He is also our race leader after the first of our two heats here in Winterberg. So the last Korean win was in 2019-20. Sun Bin Young taking his second win on this track. And right now he heads a tight knot of four sleds covered by 600s of a second because Yan Wen Gang, Axel Jung, and Christopher Grotenhair are tied in second. Effectively, then the next battle is Kaisinger, Kim, Weston, Wyatt, Banyas, and Craig Thompson. Then behind them, 300s between Florian Hour and Austin Florian, not confusing at all for an idiot like me. And then the two Chinese athletes, Chen and Yin, 200s apart. Plenty to come to with in our second heat as racing gets underway here in 2022 no! in Europe. We'll be back. Join Mike Rogals, the, the uh, IBS FTV crew, Ming Martin Haven, for the second heat. And we will be back at 12, uh, 1300. Uh, Central European Summit, uh, Central European time, which is 1200 Greenwich Mean Time. I'll get it right in a second, please. Don't worry.